So a while back, I made a video on cheap used HGST hard drives that I purchased from eBay. And in that video, I kind of tested them out and said that I was pretty happy with them for the most part and that I would go ahead and try to use them in a NAS for a while. I've been running those same hard drives in my NAS for about uh, eight months now, I think. And one of them is starting to die. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, a bunch of critical errors. These are all from one hard drive. You can see it's this uh, dev slash 884, and you'll see initially it had 73 unreadable pending sectors, and then it turned into offline. And that number uh, 73 eventually turned into 254. And you'll also see in here that there's a bunch of failed smart tests. Uh, some of these failed smart tests were done automatically. Some of them I initiated manually to try to see if I could get the drive to do anything. But uh, yes, one of those drives is struggling after about eight months of use. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, there's no GUI tool in TrueNAS to look at hard drive smart attributes. You can see whether or not they've passed or failed their test, but that doesn't really give you very much information. So if we go into the shell and we type in smart control and then dash A and then the path of the drive that we want. So in that, our case, it's uh, dev slash ADA4. This will spit out a bunch of stuff. You can see the list of smart tests here. Uh, a lot of what the last five there have failed. Uh, and then before that, there were two that were completed without error. Not really sure where this lifetime number is coming from because that's way less than the number of hours on the drive. Uh, if we scroll back up here, there's a bunch of different errors. Uh, I don't really know how to interpret these. It kind of tells you what all of these things are. There's a bunch of different uh, registers and things that it dumps when one of these drives has an error, but we're not going to look at that. But what I do know is the stuff in here. And you'll see that I, most of these things are okay, but you'll notice that there is one reallocated sector. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see the current pending sector count is 254. I will say that this drive actually isn't causing any issues right now, but I think the fact that it's failing smart test is a good indicator that it's going to be dead quite soon. And the fact that it's getting uh, current pending sectors and things and now has a... Uh, has one reallocated sector, which it never had before. And if you're curious, at this point, this drive has 74,120 hours on it, which is quite a few. Power cycle counts only 80. And yeah, there's nothing else super interesting in there. But what we're gonna do today is replace that disc and also perform another little upgrade. So to start with this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into storage and then disks. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this real quick because we're gonna probably need to know this serial number. Uh, I'm assuming that this serial number is going to be on the front of the drive and that's how we're going to identify which one is ADA4. And you will notice that here on my dashboard it actually says that the pool status is online with a green check as if there's no issues, but obviously we're having some problems with this hard drive. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace it and I'll talk about the replacement drives that I got here in a second. But to do this, I'm more or less just gonna be following the support page here. So this isn't necessarily gonna be a tutorial. This is more just gonna be me fumbling around with it. But uh, anyway, looks like what we wanna do first is offline the disk. So we're gonna go to storage, pools, and then pool stuff status is what it's telling me to do so that's here and then we have 884 we're going to want to offline that disk so we'll confirm that and say offline it says please wait and now it's going to tell us that our raid z1 pool here is in a degraded status because we have an offline disk and if you go back to our dashboard we have that same thing but with that offline it looks like it created a notification when i did that 
Yeah, one or more devices has been taken offline by the administrator. Sufficient replicas exist for the pool to continue functioning in a degraded state. Yeah, and the following devices are not healthy. Okay, so it tells you that serial number again. And just to make sure, let's go ahead and screenshot that last... Uh, I did the Windows thing. There we go. Just to be sure, let's screenshot this because this has the model and serial number in it. And we'll go ahead and shut the system down. And I'll confirm that and we'll go tear the machine apart. I just pulled this server out of its little cubby here and uh, I think I'm realizing I need to uh, dust this thing far more often than I'm dusting it out. This is kind of disgusting. To be honest with you, I haven't really done any maintenance to this thing whatsoever since I installed it in the last video, so yeah, I need to be uh, taking better care of this thing, to be honest. But I don't think a little bit of dust would have caused a hard drive to fail, so anyway, I'm going to clean this up and we'll move on with what we were doing before. All right, excuse the quality of the video in this section, but we're just kind of doing this a quick and dirty way with a camera or a cell phone and a flashlight to take a look at the inside of our computer here but uh, I, I blew the dust out of it honestly the inside wasn't nearly as bad as i was expecting fan blades kind of had a little bit of stuff caked up on them but i was looking at the serial numbers of the drives and the one that failed is kind of the odd one out i don't remember if i mentioned this in the original videos but one of these drives is a little bit different from the rest of them and the one that's different is the one that's failing uh, so most of these drives are from April, or no, sorry, May of 2014. Uh, the three here, this one, this one, and this one are all uh, May of 2014. And this one is from February of 2014. And I'm betting that this is the one that has the serial number that is failing. So this drive is the one I just pulled out here. Serial number's right there. I'm going to go check this against the data that I have and see if that number shows up anywhere. And if it does, we know that this is the one that's causing problems. Also, one more interesting piece of information. I said this one's different. This one's also made in a different country compared to the other three drives. Uh, these three are made in Thailand. This one is made in Singapore. So this one definitely came out of a different factory. So that's interesting to note. So I went and took a look at the screenshots I took earlier, and this is definitely the serial number of the drive that is failing. So interestingly enough, the one that's made in Singapore is the one that's dying, and this one is also two months older. So perhaps the ones made in Singapore are different? I'm not sure. That doesn't necessarily mean anything for us. Uh, of course, this is a sample size of one, so Definitely not statistically significant, but anyway, uh, these drives, uh, or these drive caddies make it pretty easy to replace these drives. They just kind of pop out of there. We're going to put that one to the side and we're going to do some more testing with it later. Now, of course, the question is, what am I replacing these drives with? Well, these are still perfectly available on eBay. So I bought not one, but two more of these used hard drives and you'll see these ones are both uh, dated May of 2014 so these are actually every drive in the system now is going to be precisely nine years old it is late May of 2023 right now and these drives are both made in Thailand just like the other three drives in the system so maybe the Thailand drives are going to be a bit extra strong for us I'm not sure uh, another interesting thing these two drives are slightly different compared to the ones in here in that they have significantly less power on ours. Uh, the three drives in here are now somewhere in the mid 70,000 power on hours. Uh, one of these drives has 13,000, the other one has th uh, 14,000 or thereabouts. So these uh, are kind of spring chickens compared to the ones that we got up here. Uh, in terms of price, these were listed on eBay for $40. I offered the seller $36 a piece for two of them. So I paid $72 for two six terabyte hard drives, plus I think about $11 shipping. So just like originally, a uh, pretty good deal on these drives. 
And I did the same test that I did to the first set of drives initially. I went through, just took a look at smart data uh, real quick, make sure that there was nothing like horrendously wrong with them. Uh, verified that the seller's claim of uh, 10 to 20,000 power on hours was correct, and it was. And I ran them through H2 Test W, which if you're unfamiliar with H2 Test W, it effectively just writes data across the entire hard drive and then verifies that data to make sure that there's no errors anywhere in the, in the written data. All right, so now I got these pins lined back in with the screw holes of the drive. Let's go ahead and slide this back into its little caddy. And I'll come back here and reconnect the SATA connector and the SATA power connector. Now, earlier I alluded to an upgrade on this computer, and that upgrade is this. So this is a 16 gigabyte kit of RAM, which is probably the max that's gonna fit in this motherboard given that I only have two memory slots. Technically there is like high density DDR3 where you can put 16 gigs on a single stick, but not every processor supports that stuff. So I've stuck with standard DDR3. And this stuff, it looks like it's new in package. I have no idea if this is actually used or new or not. It was so cheap, I figured I'd give it a shot. It certainly looks like it's a nice new package. But uh, anyway, I paid, I think, $17.99 for this kit. I bought it from Amazon. We'll have to see if it works for us. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the original kit that's in here is an 8 gigabyte kit. And the reason why I'm upgrading it is that I noticed that this computer, or this server, does slow down on its read and write speeds after a while. And that seems to be fixed when you restart it. And I noticed that in the system dashboard on the main page of uh, the TrueNAS, when you log into it, it constantly shows the memory as being completely full, pretty much, when it's doing that slowdown. And most of the documentation for TrueNAS will tell you that you need a minimum of 16 gigabytes, or at least 16 gigs is recommended. I did find somewhere on the, uh, on the TrueNAS website that the absolute minimum is 8 gigs. And in fairness, it did run with 8 gigs of memory without too much of an issue. But as I said, after it ran for a while, it would eventually slow down and... Uh, usually it was showing that ZFS cache was taking up pretty much all of the RAM, which I think is expected, but it was just slowing down from... Uh, usually this thing will run at about 120 megabytes a second, which is the full speed of the uh, gigabit Ethernet, uh, but it would slow from that 120 megabytes a second down to about 60 or 70, which is pretty noticeable, pretty big difference. But the memory module is coming out of here See, it's a 2x8 gig kit. Actually has a HP logos on it, which is interesting. It's like El Pita. I don't actually, I'm not too familiar with that brand. Not sure I've ever seen that one before, but uh, anyway, we'll set those off to the side. They're a nice pretty blue color. Our new ones are Teen Group. These are kind of a cool matte black circuit board. I kind of like that. Of course, no one will ever see it again after I put it in here, but uh, at EDR3, this is 1600 megahertz stuff. Not that it really matters for what we're doing with it. And RAM install on this motherboard, I think this is pretty standard, but uh, it's a little bit weird because it has uh, only the clips on the one side. So this side is fixed and the other, the back side in here, you have to uh, open the clips up, which we already did when we removed the RAM. But of course you just uh, set this in here, lining the notch up with the uh, corresponding feature on the RAM slot. I think we have to kind of put the RAM towards this side first since this side doesn't have the actual clip on it. And then we just slide this guy down in here. Kind of like so. It just needs to actually click into position just like that. And we'll pop the other one in, and we should be ready to fire this guy back up. Get 
that down in there. Maybe. There's the click. And both RAM sticks are in there now. So we should have 16 gigs of RAM and a hard drive that's not trying to fail on us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the side panels back on this guy, put it back in its little cubby and we'll fire it back up. All right, so I put it back in its little cubby and it is currently booting up. I can hear the hard drives doing things over there. Uh, I may actually even be able to reload this and have the web page come up in theory. I have had some weird issues with this motherboard not saving the proper boot device, and it's been kind of annoying because it tries to boot off one of the hard drives instead of the SSD that actually has the operating system on it. And when it does that, uh, conveniently, uh, TrueNAS apparently has something on those drives to where the display output of the machine will actually tell you that you're trying to boot off the wrong drive, which is really nice. Uh, but in this case, it has done the correct thing. And look at that, we have 15.6 gigabytes of RAM. So our RAM update has done as it should. And you can see our pool status is degraded still. And that would be because we don't have the proper. And of course that is because we don't have the old ADA4 disk. So I think what we wanna do with this is we want to say replace and we want to replace it with ADA4 so replacing this dev GPD ID whatever uh, with ADA4 and if we click on replace disk disk is not clean partitions were found okay so according to the tutorial what we can do it actually tells you right here, the replacement fails when the chosen disk has partitions or data present to destroy any data on the replacement disk. Set the force option. So we're gonna do that. We go back into pools, this little thing, no, this gear, and then we're gonna go to status, and then this guy is showing up again. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna say replace, and then we wanna replace ADA4, and we want to force that and click on replace disk. And I assume this is just going to partition the drive and do whatever it needs to do in order to function normally. And this, I don't know if this little window is going to continue showing like this or not, but I know this is going to have to rewrite a whole bunch of data onto the disk. Not sure how long that's going to take. Okay, there we go. Successfully replace disk. And we'll close that. Yeah, currently we are re-slivering the drive. Status is scanning. Claims it's gonna take six days and 20 hours. That's a little bit uh, excessive. Sure hope it doesn't take that long. Let's see what it says on the dashboard out of curiosity. Not really using any resources. I'll go ahead and dismiss all these alerts. And you can see our pool status is now online. And you can see the re-slivering here. Status is scanning. So it's probably gonna take quite a while to uh, actually replace this disc, but it does look as though it's going to work. So. We're just gonna let that go. That was actually a pretty easy and painless process to replace the disc uh, software-wise, assuming this works anyway. As we wait for this, I wanna talk a little bit about the hard drive choices. And one thing I will say is that I've been trying to find sort of the cheapest hard drives I can. And it's kinda of hard to find these things for like $40 or less. There's a lot of these six terabyte drives that sell for around $55. And I found some kind of interesting eBay listings. For example, this one, uh, this is a screenshot from the description of an eBay listing. And you can see uh, a model number and it says here, condition detail used, professionally pulled from a working unit and tested to be in good health. 
They show light signs of wear from previous use. For complete understanding of the item's overall cosmetic condition, please refer to the photos included in this listing. And if you look at the photo included in this listing, the thing literally has bad written right across the label. So I'm not sure exactly if that's a, a good sign or not, but uh, yeah. Did not buy this one. It was cheap, I'll give it that, but I... Uh, Get a little spooked by the fact that this is apparently the real image of the disc, and it literally has bad written across the front of it. But, yeah, you kind of have to search around a bunch if you want to find decent deals on these things. It's not super easy to do, but it seems like most of these sellers are like recyclers that are willing to take offers on their stuff. And once this is done re-slivering, I'm going to... So once this is done with the hard drive replacement fully... I'm probably going to play around with that other drive and see if I can't uh, hook it into a Windows machine and uh, do the test with like H2 test W and see what it does because I had expected it to come back with data loss. And we're back. It's actually been two or three weeks since the last segment of this video, I think. But uh, anyway, I did run some testing on this drive, ran it through H2 test W. When I ran this drive in that test, it actually passes with flying colors. It writes at completely reasonable speeds, and it didn't lose any data whatsoever. So even though it does have a bad sector, and more pending bad sectors, it has not really shown any sign of active data loss. I should also mention that I let the drive replacement operation in TrueNAS run overnight, and that completed by morning with no errors. So my NAS is... Back up and running, fully functional. This drive is probably on its way out soon. I wouldn't trust it for anything even remotely critical. But uh, for now, it actually is still storing data without lo any loss in functionality. So in the future, I may actually end up using this drive for like a Steam library or something where, uh, you know, worst case scenario, I have to re-download stuff. Uh, I definitely wouldn't put any of my pictures or videos or anything critical on this. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. I learned how to replace a hard drive in TrueNAS, which is something I've never done before, so it's been interesting to me. And maybe it's a bit of a cautionary tale on these eBay hard drives, but we knew from the previous two videos that I've done on this that these things are a risk, even if they are brand new, or I shouldn't say brand new, but fully functioning when you get them from eBay. I am curious to see how much longer the other drives that were made in May of 2014 last. Interesting that the one black sheep of the family died before the rest of them. I guess we'll see how much longer the other uh, five drives last. So I figured I'd just give you this little update video on the NAS and uh, how it's going. So that's about it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.